Good morning. My name is Michael Pate. I'm standing in for Paul Kavanagh on Monday the 30th of June for this morning's podcast. Looking at the week ahead, we've got a light reporting season this week. We've got Ocado uh, on Tuesday, Tullow on Wednesday, and Samson on Friday for the Killick names. On the macro diary, we've got non-farm payrolls uh, in the US on Thursday. That's on Thursday because we've got a holiday for the 4th of July in the States. Uh, we've also got Chinese PMI uh, on Wednesday, and we've got a number of bank reports in terms of lending. So looking at last week, just a quick review. The big issue last week was the Bank of England mortgage lending review, uh, which came out which was pretty, pretty dovish, really. So it hasn't really changed anything in terms of where we see the mortgage market and, and the amount of mortgage approvals coming through. So they talked about uh, the, the affordability stress test being base plus 3%, uh, and no banks lending more than 15% above four and a half times income. Banks were already operating within those confines well, well within that. So we shouldn't see much change there in terms of mortgage approvals. And today we had net mortgage lending numbers, which were actually pretty sluggish. So that, so that sort of reinforces that. And I think it reinforces the fact that it, the price rises we've seen in London, we think, are due to a lack of supply rather than a credit bubble. So last week we saw a little bit of a bounce in the house builders. Um, they have been very poor performers uh, over the last three months, as you can see here. Um, we've seen sort of relative to the market um, around down 18, between 15 and 20 percent. This has been at the same time we've seen strong upgrades in, in the earnings of these companies. So, so what you've seen actually is a sharp contraction in the PE of, of, of these names. So, so the valuations are now looking more attractive than they have for uh, some time and, and having gone through a quarter where people have been focusing on rate rises and mortgage availability, uh, we're now back to the fundamentals and Persimmon are actually reporting on Wednesday, so we'll get a, a sense of what they're doing. So we think those valuations are now looking pretty attractive um, and relative to history also looking pretty attractive. As, as I said earlier, we have been talking about interest rate rises. Interest rates have been on the rise in terms of expectations this year. Um, as you can see from this chart. Um, equally, two-year gilt has also been rising over the year. And that is creating a policy divergence between what the, the states, what the, uh, the Fed are doing, what the ECB are doing, which are you know, leading to sort of softer monetary policy. So as a result, you're seeing strength in sterling against dollar and against euro. Um, Sterling is now at a trade-weighted 15-year high or close to. So that's starting to have an effect on companies that um, report, uh, earn their, their costs are in, in sterling and, and their, their earnings are overseas. So particularly when you're looking at the dollar earners in the, in, in the, in the UK and the FTSE 100, uh, Tate and Lyle, Compass Group, Pearson, Woolsey, Johnson Matthew, Matthew, BAE Systems are, are names that, that you should be aware of that sort of trend that, that, that they've been negotiating against. With Iraq off the front pages over the weekend, Brent has rolled over a touch um, and the integrated oils, uh, which we've got a chart of here, have come back a touch. Um, we've been highlighting Shell um, over the last couple of weeks just because we are seeing evidence of new thinking in Shell We've seen 11 billion of disposals year to date, cancellation of the script dividend plan, US pipeline infrastructure spin-off. Um, this is all leading to a point where we think the, the cover on the dividend will be 1.6 times by 2016 against 1.2 times where it is currently, which means that people will be a lot more comfortable about the dividend, uh, therefore the shares should re-rate. Um, we also had the capital markets day for Tullow last week. Um, again, they are focusing on capital discipline as well. Uh, we've seen asset sales in Bangladesh and pa Pakistan, they're, they're poorer performing areas. Um, and we're seeing it's attractive resource expansion in, in Kenya through that stock. So they've got some numbers on, on Wednesday, but the Capital Markets Day uh, told us a lot about what they're doing at the moment last week. Also, um, last week we saw Nike coming out with very strong Q4. So this is further evidence of structural change uh, and momentum in our health and well-being theme. Um, really attractive about this stock is, is the, the margins, the gross margins are going up. So, so we saw uh, this quarter, we saw gross margins up 90 basis points. That's because they're cutting out the retailer, going direct to consumer, and they're se selling higher 
value higher margin products. So, so that's a you know, very attractive trend. Now, if you can have that trend while earnings are growing, uh, sorry, and, and where, where sales are, have got strong momentum, which is what we've seen here, then you're in a very sort of strong earnings, earnings picture. So as you can see here, we saw very strong growth, particularly in, in, in Western Europe in terms of order momentum um, and, and strong, strong set sales growth in Q4 uh, across most geographies. Obviously, China is, is where we see the real rebound potential for that stock, so, so still liking that stock a lot. Um, a further extension of that theme, we've also got Whole Foods as a buy. It's been a, a difficult stock to own recently. Um, has had a number of, of, of profit warnings over the last uh, three or four months. Um, but we saw a Morgan Stanley survey this week talking about the natural and organic market um, and that it is growing very quickly against the sort of traditional food at home market. So 9% compound annual growth rate there. What's particularly interesting is this trend is absolutely in its infancy. So 65% of those people who started buying, uh, who, who have bought a organic or natural product that's labelled organic or natural um, have, have bought that in the last, have started buying that in the last two years. So as you can see here. Um, of that group, um, of those people who are now buying natural and organic, the demographic is incredibly attractive. So 30% so of, of those buyers are in the age group of 18 to 34. So, so you've got the young demographic and they've just started to buy recently. If you look at the, the plus 65s, they're the people who don't buy natural or organic. Um, and, and so we, th we feel this is a very strong theme coming through. Moving on to another food retailer, Ocado, which got results tomorrow. Um, just going back to our buy case on that, we initiated a buy case recently on that. The reason why we like this is we are, we're seeing UK online grocery spend growing, starting to sort of, the forecasts are starting to look exponential in terms of that curve. Um, and, and what we're seeing in terms of the, the, the customer response to um, their services is that the satisfaction rating is very high. It's sort of up there with Aldi um, and, and obviously sort of eclipsing uh, the surveys on, on data on, on Tesco. Um, because of that, you're seeing growing customer base. Um, that steady growth has been coupled with um, uh, larger weekly orders. Um, and, and larger basket sizes. So, so as you can see here, sales are starting to expand. Now, because it's got a very high fixed cost base, this business, um, the, the sales are growing into that cost base, and therefore you're seeing margins starting to expand as well. So stronger sales at higher margins, that's an attractive buy case for us. Thanks very much.